This is one of my absolute favourite chemistry demonstrations. You might think, in an age when we're used to seeing all sorts of special effects on screen, something like this might have lost its impact. But there's a world of difference between cheesy video effects and seeing something in person. Demonstrations like this can really capture your students' attention and be part of a lesson to remember. The iodine clock reaction is a classic chemistry demonstration that can be done in a number of ways. I'm using a solution of hydrogen peroxide with a mixture of potassium iodide, starch and sodium thiosulfate. Precise instructions for making these solutions up will appear on screen about now. You can pause the video to make a note of these, but I'd recommend you use the teaching notes that accompany this video. When showing this reaction to your students, it's a good idea to do it in front of a white screen or perhaps even use larger quantities of the solutions in a big beaker so all the students get to see it. Now, the colour change happens when iodine reacts with starch to create a blue-black complex. When the solutions are mixed, hydrogen peroxide reacts with iodide ions to form iodine. As soon as the iodine forms, it reacts with thiosulfate ions and reverts to iodide ions. So as long as you have thiosulfate ions in the mixture, you don't get the colour change. This happens by a very quick reaction. Once the thiosulfate ions are used up, the iodine reacts with starch to give you the familiar blue-black complex. The time taken for this colour change to happen can be varied by changing the concentrations or the temperatures of the reagents. So theoretically, a clock of any time interval could be produced. This is a great reaction to start your lessons with and grab your students' attention. And there's all sorts of other things you can do with it. At Key Stage 5, it's an accessible way to get students to determine rate constants and reaction orders. At Key Stage 4, you could use the demonstration to introduce a practical where students investigate how changing concentrations affects reaction rates. At Key Stage 3, this can be useful for teaching about working scientifically. For example, you could explore measurement uncertainty by giving each of your students a stop clock and getting them to time how long it takes for the colour to change and then discussing why they don't all get the same time. Now, if I've got my concentrations correct, these should all go pretty much simultaneously. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> 